internet. Um, I am here today to talk about being a female in the Coast Guard. I haven't seen many Coast Guard videos for girls, let alone Coast Guard videos in general of boot camp experience, experience thus far. Really, I can't say I have that much experience. I've only really been in since December, so still pretty new. But I thought I would make a video talking about book game experience, what you should and shouldn't do, should and shouldn't bring, what was the best part, what was the worst part. I'm sure I'll forget something within this video, but I thought I would make it because I wish I would have had a video telling me some inside tips from a girl's perspective before going into boot camp. So I thought hopefully I would be that person to someone else who is considering joining. First of all, I mean I'm sure you've heard this from multiple people and from your recruiter that it's not going to be easy and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Now I don't look like the most fit person but I'm also not the most unhealthy person. I didn't really, I mean like I worked out enough once in a while I do some at home stuff. I can run a mile and a half in the time allotted before even getting there. Um, I had a, a lot of trouble with the push ups and the sit ups though. It was not the most fun experience but it teaches you a lot and I wouldn't change it for the world. So also I apologize for the horrible lighting. I'm also living in an RV right now. Coast Guard. <laughs> well, because of the government shutdown. It's a long story. We won't get into it. We're just going to talk about boot camp right now. Okay, so first off, what I think is very important is know your required knowledge. I studied my required knowledge enough. Well, I thought enough. I studied my required knowledge pretty well. I didn't like slack. I didn't know nothing going in, but I definitely would have studied more. I would definitely know everything. Honestly, <laughs> I'm only like two months out of boot camp right now and I don't remember my um, general orders. I know most of them. I can't tell you that I remember all of them <laughs> though, but definitely know those going in. Definitely study rights and ranks. That's so important. That got me um, in trouble a few times. So please, please just study your stuff because I was just like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll learn it when I get there. And like, I'm not saying I didn't know nothing going in. I definitely didn't know enough going in. So I would definitely advise you to not slack and to learn everything you can before you get there because it will make your experience so much easier and it'll be a lot less stressed. <laughs> there's no there's no way you can avoid stress at all um, but it definitely would make things easier if I had studied more beforehand second of all um, if you're not gonna bring more if you're not gonna like bring gel with you like when you pack like your bag the carry-on that you're allowed to bring if you're not going to bring like a lot of stuff because of the flight or whatever when you can go to the exchange when your first trip to the exchange is buy a lot of hair gel for you females buy a lot now like I have a lot of hair which at the time I had a little less hair probably like maybe like that much less hair definitely buy a lot I at the exchange when we were there for the first time I bought three big bottles these are the bottles they're gonna give you um, I have mine upside down but the, this is the third one that I bought I ran through two full bottles and this while at boot camp and this is all I have left from like two months of boot camp you're gonna need a lot so please 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 bring a lot or make sure you buy some at the exchange buy more than you think you're gonna need because either a you're gonna need more than you think you need or b some other girls gonna be like oh my gosh can I borrow your hair gel because you're gonna be sharing this you're gonna be sharing a lot of your stuff more than you think because we all run out but we all take care of each other we're all family it's fine okay this is a big one at least for my company it was big we had a lot of girls in my company we had um by the time we graduated we had about 15 20 girls I would say maybe we started off with about 30 which was a lot for a company it was a struggle it was a huge struggle bus having so many girls it was nice in ways in other ways it was tough because you have to share showers share counter space in the bathroom um, it was a lot more when it came to like cleanups uh, when it came to like a lot of the drills that we did it was rough having a lot of girls and girls are like come on like we all stress out we all annoy the heck out of each other and it was 
rough being with so many girls in such a close space when we're all like stressed out and moody and just jerks. That was really fun. Hopefully, um, if you end up joining, that your company doesn't have too many girls or like that y'all mostly get along. We didn't really have like the biggest problems. We did have some problems with some girls, but um, it definitely wasn't crazy to where there was like fist fights or anything. We did get close. We had some throwing things and some words that were tossed around, but no fist fights, luckily. Keep the head clean. Like when you go to change in there, when you go to change into your uniform, when you go to take a shower, when you're just getting ready in the morning, keep the head clean. You're gonna get in so much trouble if there's like hair in the drain, if there isn't water that's cleaned out of the sink. If there's gear adrift, that's a big deal. And a lot of the girls in my company, when they would just finish getting ready in the morning, they wouldn't grab their stuff and put it in their rack. They would just leave it lying around, towels just thrown everywhere, all of their like gel and hair stuff, and they'd throw it in those little cubbies. Don't do that. Please take your stuff back to your rack with you. Just please don't leave your stuff in the head. When you're done getting ready, grab as much of it as you can, shove it in your rack, and then go. Like, I know you don't have much time. Things are nuts. Like, you're not going to not mess up. So you can't be perfect. I'm sorry as much as, like, you think, oh, I, I'm going to make my rack so perfect and all the stuff in there is going to be in perfect order. Just know now, don't have your expectations so high to be perfect because you're not going to be you're going to mess up at some point and I'd rather you know now than when it happens and you're like eh, freaking out and crying because we had so many crying girls in our company but <laughs> just that's a big one keep the head clean because when you're out at during like classes if you're out I don't know when even when you're doing like intensive training when you're out at the gym swim class whatever when you're not at the house some of your CC's will go there they will check and they will do an inspection of your squad bag Every time we leave, freaking take the garbage out. My rack in the beginning was um, right next to the head. So like, it was just right in the front of the room. The head was right there. So usually me and my rack mate would be the ones to take out the trash because it was easiest for us to get ready in the morning. We were the fastest because we were just right there. So whoever's done and ready first before y'all leave for like, for lunch or breakfast or whatever, take it out. Don't think like, oh, that person always says, or I don't have to take it out. If you're done first, just go take the trash out so that people who are taking longer, people who don't, didn't have as much time to get ready, don't have to do that. Don't have to worry about that. And y'all aren't going to get in trouble. I ended up taking the trash out a good amount of the time. A few of the other girls did too. It was kind of frustrating because there were other girls who were done before us who wouldn't take the trash out. So please, if you're done first, make sure you take the trash out. Again, I'm just trying to save y'all some headaches because keep the head clean, take the trash out and hopefully that will save you a bit of yelling. I mean, sometimes they have to yell. Usually it's a time filler. They will just yell because they have to. Um, <laughs> it's part of the training. You can't, you can't think that if everything's perfect, they're not gonna yell. Even if you were like the best company and everything was clean, they still gotta yell at you. I'm sorry, it's just, it's part of the training. But another thing I would encourage is to make sure you girls work together when it comes to drills and making your racks and anything like that encourage each other and work together because so many times I was just disappointed and tired and frustrated and I wanted to quit and I was just so frustrated that I would just like cry because I was just mad I was just upset because I was just tired of getting yelled at for no reason it's just a time filler they are just filling these gaps in the schedule when they have nothing going on what else are they gonna do oh we're just gonna go punish the company it happens a lot it's gonna be frustrating you'll get through it I promise but just encourage each other when someone looks like they're getting tired and they want to put their canteen down when someone just looks frustrated when someone's screaming their face off and they look like they're just so angry just encourage each other to be like you've got this we've got this just a bit more like come on we've got this let's go that was huge for me and I know for a lot of the other girls just don't be so hard on each other everything sucks for everyone and I know that some people are gonna be slacking more a lot of people sandbag and that caused a lot again a lot of problems for our company but don't get angry at each other they want you to get angry at each other they want you to fight they want you to disagree they want you to butt heads Th that's kind of part of the forming where you need to learn to work together despite the differences despite the anger that you guys have in between each other please work through it don't get so pissed that you cause issues because that's never fun that stresses everyone else out just encourage just work together as a team get through those eight weeks as cleanly as possible and as scot-free because like hopefully you don't get noticed hopefully you're a wallflower because I tried to be it didn't work uh, but some people made it that way I did not 
but please work together. It helps so much just to have people who are like, how are you doing? How can I help? If you're faster at certain things, go help one of the other girls out. Like, let's say like if it's like a shoe shining thing that's going on. If you can shine your boondockers faster than most people, if you're really good at it, if you're done, go help someone else. There was this one drill that we would do where we had to have our PT gear on and we had to put it on a certain amount of seconds and then we had to put our ODUs on over top of the PT gear and then then if we didn't do that fast enough, you had to take all that off and put all your PT gear on and have your go fasters on in a certain amount of time. If you didn't make that, put the ODUs back on with your boondockers and everything. It was again one of those sweat things that sucked. But if I was able to finish putting my ODUs on over my PT gear before someone else next to me was, when I was done, I'd start tying their boondockers together. I would start helping them like put stuff on because if you work as a company, if y'all get done at the same time, that's how you win. You can't just be like, oh, I'm the fastest, I'm done. I'm like, no. <laughs> you have to have everyone in the same loop. Everyone has to be finishing. Everyone has to be fast. Teamwork. That's a big, big part of this as much as you don't want to and you want to just be on your own and you get frustrated because everyone else is slow or everyone else is not as good at you at certain things. Just be patient with each other. It sucks, but I needed people to be patient with me. I need to be patient with our people and that's how we made it through. So work together please especially when you have like um time drills of like making your rack if you've got your rack mate there help each other out stop trying to squeeze past each other to like shove your covers in and make your bed as fast as you can just help each other out if someone's on the top bunk make theirs first make it together grab the blankets help it goes so much faster and then get to that bottom rack and start making the bottom rack you will be done so much faster your rack will look so much cleaner but if you also know how to do hospital corners help a brother out we all didn't know what we were doing we had a few girls in the company who did super duper helpful just go around check everyone's hospital corner if you're done check each other's hospital corners go help everyone tug them in again teamwork is huge there were some girls in my company i wasn't the biggest fan of did i help them yeah that's just how we had to get by which is again a huge lesson that we had to learn teamwork is huge something that was really hard for me at first to get used to was the speed to eat and to drink like how much time you had to eat was not a lot it was just insane because you have to drink two cups of water two of those cups like i think it's like a half inch from the top dear lord i'm gonna get yelled at if i forget but it was a half inch from the top the water's got to be full in the glass half inch from the top of the glass you have to drink two glasses of water with each meal and like you're starving you're hungry but you only have about like 15 minutes to eat and that's not just 15 minutes like once you sit down you've got 15 minutes that's 15 minutes to like get through the line get your food sit down and eat especially if you get caught by a cc and they're like testing you on required knowledge and stuff that's the last time you get to eat i would say that was one of the hardest things for me actually which is weird we first got there to not feel sick after drinking so much water and eating so fast if you're not doing that much sweating like yeah you are but it's not as like crazy as later on in the beginning you don't need that much food you don't need that much water yet so you're like trying to swallow all this stuff down and shove it down there and it's it makes you feel really sick a lot of people would get like sick and throw up and it was it was so fun um again that's something you get used to boot camps taught me to eat a lot i've definitely slowed down since then because i'm not as physical not as crazy um active as i was also try not to sandbag i sandbagged a few times i got caught once that got me a record of counseling that was fun um but try not to sandbag really you're there for your own personal reasons everyone has their own reason for joining but we're all in it for the same like the same purpose we're all we have our reasons but we're all headed towards the same goal so you need to make sure like you're fighting for that goal you remember why you joined and it's going to suck it's going to be probably the hardest thing you've ever done. Again, I don't know you, I don't know what you've been through, but it's going to be rough. Everything's not gonna be easy for you. Everything's not gonna be super hard. So like there are certain aspects of it that are rough and especially physical wise, the things you have to do when it comes to holding your peace for a certain amount of time. A lot of the physical stuff when they take us outside for finding some real estate and when fire, fire, fire was called and you're running outside. Some of us are slower than others. Some of us aren't as strong as others. Some of us can't do as many push-ups. But as long as they see you trying, that's almost all that matters. Again, of course you have to pass a certain standard. When it comes to, like when you go outside and you're doing push-ups and sit-ups and cherry pickers and all those kinds of things, if they see you shaking, if they see you sweating, if they see you trying, they will not call you out because they know that you're trying your hardest to 
do your best. That's all that they ask is that you do your best and that you're not getting lazy or sandbagging. That's a huge, huge deal because if they see you sandbag, a lot of the times the whole company will get in trouble and there will be a lot of rough days for the company. So just try your hardest. Just try your hardest. I guess that's all I can say. One of the hardest things that we had to do was probably to earn our flag. And I mean, that's something like to earn your flag, you gotta do something rough. Um, a lot of the things that we did to earn our flag was just like stuff that you do during a sweat session, but it was just like multiples over and over and over and over again. We had to like, our company's was really intense. Was such, such, such a moment of pride though. I'd have to say that's probably one of the proudest moments of my life when we earned our flag. Um, but anyways, I hated when they make you take your sea bag and right after they've given you like, you know, divine hours or like a bit of time to remake the inside of your rack, then they say, all right, go grab your sea bag and put all of your belongings in that sea bag and get out on the quarter deck. And you fill your sea bag with all of your uniform stuff and all of your belongings and all of your laundry and everything is shoved into that sea bag and you're passing it or you're walking around with it. And it's this huge bag on your back that's super duper heavy. So this is the sea bag. Um, it's pretty pretty big. You can fit a lot more in here than, <laughs> than you think. But this is what you're shoving all your stuff in and then you're throwing it on your back, carrying it around, passing it, sweating, shoved in a small room, walking around the regiment with it. It's rough. We had one time we all had to go outside and like pass them around the parade field and we just had to all stand in a line and pass them for we probably did that for two hours which was again rough that was probably um the physical aspect of it was harder than i thought it was going to be the coast guard boot camp is probably one of the hardest mentally it was definitely harder physically than i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be mostly like class stuff and that was just going to be a lot of remembering which it is but then you've got the physical aspect of it which is still extremely tough Another thing I wish I would have had more of, while I was at boot camp, um, what I would have packed more of or bought at the exchange would be lotion. And depending on when you go, um, I was there in the winter, kind of. I was there like from Halloween till right before Christmas. So I was there in the winter. It wasn't the coldest part of the winter. It was still pretty warm uh, when we got there, but it was really dry and lotion was huge like I just wanted to like bathe in it because everything was just so dry and so gross so I would definitely encourage more lotion more hair gel um probably more deodorant too um when you and you run through that again it's like nice because if you have extra of anything of course you can offer it to girls who run out of it a lot of the time someone's gonna ask do you have more of this did anyone have that hair bands again I don't know about your hair my hair is super duper thick um, so I broke hair bands on a daily basis, which was so frustrating because you're speeding to like get your hair up and get it out of the way and then your hair band just breaks and flies off somewhere and to Narnia. I would encourage you to get um, two kinds of brushes. Don't have just one brush. I've got two different kinds of brushes right here. These are the two that I brought to boot camp. So there's this one which is like a normal, I oh, see all the hair on it. Um, just like a normal, like this is a wet brush, which are like the best brushes, especially because like after showers, brush your hair through it'll make things easier in the morning this is one of those wet um tangle brushes so you can brush your hair when it's wet doesn't get all snarly and everything but you're gonna want a brush that like really does get through your hair gonna, this is one you're gonna want to start with any normal bristle brush plastic bristle whatever comb um you're gonna want to start with that so you can get all the snarls out of your hair first and then i would encourage you i got this one at the exchange this is a boar bristle brush you're gonna want this as well because this is what's gonna smooth your hair down. So you're gonna use this to like get it up, get it out of the way, get it all smoothed over, and then this is like the final stage. This is your coat of pink polish, and this is your clear coat. This is that final step that you're gonna get to make it look really, really nice, really laid down. It makes it look a lot cleaner. By the end, we were all professionals with our brushes and our hair looked so nice by the end of boot camp. Uh, we were taught well. Eventually, one of our CCs taught us how to do her bun, we call it the gun bun. Shout out, pay off your gun. Yeah, two brushes for sure. Don't just stick with one or the other because it's not gonna work, you're gonna need both. Now, these um, donuts, technically, when we first got there, they weren't allowed in the beginning. We weren't allowed to use these until later in training. One of the girls in our company did use this all the time. She always was told, your hair looks so perfect, oh my gosh, do it more like her, her hair's perfect. But I was told we weren't allowed to use these until later. I'm not the biggest fan of these either. My hair's super thick, so putting thick hair over a huge donut just makes this 
donut even bigger and there's just gigantic just duh, it didn't work for me it does help later on it does look nicer for like fancier events for graduation if you want to use these it doesn't really save time honestly the way that we were taught to do our hair it's a lot faster than just using this which does look nice but what you are more worried about in the beginning is time how fast it takes you to do your hair you don't have to purchase this if you don't want to it's not like a necessity um, but one of our girls in our company her husband um, sent us some of these so that's where I got mine from but I'm not the biggest fan if it's for you go for it I just couldn't do it to save my life so anyways that's all I can really think of for now um, I'm sure I'll probably think of some more later after I'm done editing this video um, but if you have any other questions, if you have any other concerns, any other things you want to ask about, feel free to comment. I will probably be. End I probably will end up making another video, um, depending on how many questions I get, if I get any, if this even gets seen. But I know that I wanted some girl to post something about boot camp before I got there because it was all guys just talking about what the dudes do, what the dudes need to pack. That there wasn't many, you know, people talking about the Coast Guard. Coast Guard is small. Coast Guard's not as popular as other branches of the military. So. I'm here to hopefully fill in some girls who are considering joining the Coast Guard, how boot camp was, what I felt about it, some tips and tricks, but let me know what you think, comment questions, I am so willing to answer, I will respond as best as I can, and maybe even make another video. So um, again, congratulations if you're considering joining or if you've already joined, and hopefully we'll see you in the fleet.